Every winter, thousands of the world's business, political and media elite gather in the Swiss town of Davos to discuss the world. The World Economic Forum is a huge meeting, but one biased towards the stagnant economies of the West. Every summer, thousands of a different set of elite gather from the Muslim world for what is already being called the Islamic version of Davos, the World Islamic Economic Forum. Unlike Davos, this meeting changes location each year, and this summer, for the first time, it was held in Central Asia, in Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan, current chair of the Organization on the Islamic Conference, and an economy of growing global importance. Today, we witness a seismic shift in the demographics of global economics. A resurrection not only of increased trade connection between different regions such as Southeast Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia, but a coming together of its peoples and with it, a greater understanding of cultures and various traditions. Aside from the usual round of discussion on the halal industry and Islamic banking, there was a sense delegates wanted to tackle deeper issues in the Muslim world. Most notably, its underperformance economically, along with unemployment and poverty, highlighted in a keynote address at the forum. GDP growth for Muslim countries as a whole was only 2.1% in 2009, a relatively low growth rate that is further compounded by unequal development and inequitable distribution of wealth and income within the Muslim countries themselves. The Muslim world accounts for a fifth of the world's population, yet generates only 7% of GDP. Frustration at this poverty, along with the Arab Spring, were key issues at the World Islamic Economic Forum meetings. The beginning of the 21st century's second decade turns out to be a time of great challenges for the Ummah. The global financial crisis, dependency on food imports, youth unemployment and a wide range of other problems have caused unprecedented upheavals in a number of countries in North Africa and the Middle East. The Arab Spring may be a signifier that the Muslim world is changing, but in many countries the underlying conditions remain the same. There is a problem in the region of Arab countries, a problem of governance, of lack of governance of sure, and with results of employment. The problem is employment. The answer is to create the maximum of opportunities of jobs. Opportunity for jobs, but not necessarily jobs themselves. I think there's plenty of large development in many of these countries, but it's top down as opposed to bottom up. And I think that that's a reflection of the fact that you need bottom up democracy and also bottom up investment. In any established economy, the lion's share of jobs are created by small businesses, creating wealth and stability, but also a vital sense of ownership. I think when a person has his own business, he is interested, because it belongs to him. We are all people, we love freedom, and when an individual has his own business, he is freer. But such freedom can only flower in the right conditions, which must be created by equitable, honest and transparent governments. Good governance is at the heart, at the core of uh, ensuring that there is uh, fair and uh, just uh, distribution of wealth uh, in the Muslim countries and uh, in the world for that matter. And so it's important for us to remember that uh, governments that are not governed on the basis of good governance, are living on borrowed time. The Islamic world is growing at twice the rate of the non-Muslim world and within 20 years may account for up to a quarter of the global population. This represents a strong demographic advantage if the right environment exists to tap it. A key issue it still faces, however, and one recognized at the forum, is a negative Western perception. 
The demonization of Islam, I think the media has an important role to play here. There's some really good examples within the Muslim community, the global Muslim community, which need to be showcased. Examples like the moderate Muslim democracies of Indonesia, Turkey and Malaysia, stable, successful and rapidly approaching developed status, without abandoning the central principles of their faith, especially tolerance and moderation. I think uh, the concept of uh, global movement of the moderates as a key value is cardinal to ensuring that countries in the Muslim world will develop in, on the basis of social justice. Historically, Islam has been about, been about the middle way, and about moderation. And, it, and it's, this is not a, a new phenomena. This is something that's rooted in the Islamic tradition. To us, Islam means something constructive, and Muslims means the ones who are prepared to contribute to the overall positive development. And if you don't agree, you want to raise political issues or even religious issues, please go somewhere else. While this year's World Islamic Economic Forum may not have resolved the world's issues as the forum came to a close, across the city at the central mosque a steady stream of faithful came to pray, demonstrating perhaps the real face of nearly all of modern Islam, moderate, peaceful and respectful. Amen.